Jason, this week's episode of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast is brought to the good people by Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. Budget Blinds! Hey, did you know that Budget Blinds is the place to get your signature series shades? That is a very fancy name for our robot shade overlords. It is, but if you are ready to turn your home into a smart home, there is no better place to go. And one more thing, they're pretty good eggs too. They They are great community supporters. They are. They get all the credit for doing all this cool stuff. I mean, we love to say that we come up with these ideas and we don't, it's them. They come out of the goodness of their hearts. They do a lot of stuff for the community and they know what they're talking about in the uh, window treatment world. So uh, all hail our robot shade overlords at Budget Blinds. Go see our friends at Budget Blinds of Lee Summit right in the heart of the city, downtown. Tell them Jason and Nick sent you. Hello again, and welcome to Lee Summit Town Hall, a weekly podcast about what you can do to make a difference. I'm Jason Norbury, and as always, I'm joined by a man who has obviously lost the pan- pandemic hair podcast challenge. It's Nick Parker. The it's true. The of Link to Lee Summit. I, you Nick know what? In, he's buzzed it all off. I, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. I, I, and, and I know that places are opening and you can get hair appointments, but I just hit my limit. I grabbed the clippers. I took the hair. I didn't quite shave the face, but mostly took it all off. I'm starting fresh. I, I, you know, I, I get it. Actually, as it turned out, um, and just to give you a difference between Nick and I, Nick thinks about like, oh, I should probably get a haircut. And then he goes out and figures out where to get his haircut. Jason has had a standing four week appointment with the same woman for 20 years, uh, every four weeks. I go and I see Kathy and she cuts my hair and she's fantastic and I love her. So Kathy, I love you. So, but as it turns out, I had an appointment scheduled uh, for like the day that Kansas city, Missouri reopened or right after Kansas city, Missouri reopened. And I I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I couldn't go. I was not ready to venture out into the reopened world yet. So I had to tell Kathy that we're just going to put it off. And so I am stuck with this beautiful, beautiful hair until june and actually i don't mind i don't mind the the long the length on the top is all right it's getting a little mullety in the back and i'm not a real fan of that Um, wait a minute wait 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 lisa mccown town hall mullet challenge mullet challenge i'm not holding on for that long forget it it will not happen it will not happen can we can we do this for a cause is there a cause we could do the mullet girl for look i've been mullet free since 1990 and i'm not going back (laughs) All right. I thought it was worth a shot. And, and for those of you, no, I'm not posting any pictures online of the, uh, the 1989 uh, soccer rocker that I had going on back in the day. What if we raised money every week for a local nonprofit? Until Jason had a mullet? No, 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 no. And, and, oh. and we hit a goal every week and Jason doesn't cut his hair. Every week? <laughs> I look, we uh, literally, I bet right now, even though this isn't being broadcast, I bet right now, somewhere in the ether, Matt Sanding has heard this and is thinking <laughs> up a way to get this done <laughs> and texting you and me to like, come on, come on, we're going to do it that way. We're I'm do putting it. it, I am putting it out there. The Lisa Matt Town Hall, Jason Grows a Mullet Challenge. We need to find a, a local nonprofit that needs some cash and we're going to take donations. And as long as the donations keep coming, Jason is not allowed to get a haircut. That is frightening and the scariest thing I've heard. Done deal. All right, fine. All right, our unofficial sponsor today, by the way, is the airplane that landed on 470 on Tuesday afternoon. It's literally like I could hit like a really good uh, golf driver shot and I might be able to hit the plane from here. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a little weird to have a plane landing that close. And in the words of Bob Uecker, uh, you're landing just a bit outside <laughs> like you can see the airport for where this plane landed on the it's, highway it's, it's true we don't know the news yet we, we we haven't heard all of the details yet so i hope that our, our guests are um, are okay i hope yeah, that everybody I hope so. it didn't seem like the the early reports didn't seem to indicate there were any injuries but uh something's weird and uh i bet the highway patrol doesn't have to deal with that one every day hey you know who else's backyard is, is right near that landing spot hmm. my dad 
Huh? Monots, Monots. that's true. They, they have uh, <laughs> their people there. So, Hey, just a few, a few quick things uh, as, we, as we get into the show this week. Jason, first off, I want to say this. I'm very, very, very happy to remind people We've got sculptures down, downtown. There are this some fantastic true. new pieces of art in downtown. It is the beginning of a, a sculpture walk. Um, I'm going to, as, as chair of the Lee Summit Art Council in Brag Lee time. Summit, Brag it is brag time. time. This is something we've been working on for a while, and it's really, really, really cool to see this, this get started. Um, right now, they are, there is a sculpture out on Douglas outside of Fire Station, there is one next to Third Street Social and one at Third and Market Street outside Sabor Latino. They are really, really cool. I love the Raptor sculpture outside the fire station. You can stick and your head in the dinosaur's you, mouth. It's you very can. Exciting. And I'm going to say this, as awesome as that one is, and they're all pretty cool, but as awesome as that one is, my favorite one is still uh-huh. coming. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You got to wait. But my favorite is still coming. There you go. So there's more to come. And apparently, according to Nick, it'll be even cooler. So it's, that, it's they are cool. Better. And and adding stuff downtown is always, always a big plus. So that is the, that is kind of like, there's just not a ton going on, but you, this you is know the this last is? week. Yes, this it's is. the last week of quarantine school. Okay. So you have to tell the Charlie story. <laughs> you got to tell the Charlie story. This is funny and sad all at the same time. It is a little. It is a little sad. So, 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 my son Charlie was all geared up. He had convinced himself that last week was the last week of the school year, and he had created his own playlist. He was ready to rock out and celebrate on Friday, and then you could watch his face fall when he realized. That was just the last day to catch up on any missing work. And they still had this week. Oh. Wah, wah. I mean, look, as a parent of a teenager and an almost teenager, uh, like causing child disappointment is kind of like sport. But <laughs> man, I feel bad for Charlie. Look, That's look, rough. That, that was a so rough, rough one because, yes, you, you, you feel bad, but also, you know, as the parent of a teen, sometimes you just want to, you, I mean, you want to laugh really loudly. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's a little bit entertaining. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's rough. So Charles, we feel for you, but the end is actually nigh. You're going to be done with school this week, along with the rest of you people in R7. Uh, so good luck to that. This is probably one of the weirdest school years on record. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming until the next one uh, is probably how that's going to go. But uh, so and uh, everybody can get their go pick up their stuff because like everybody had to leave school and they couldn't go get their things from their lockers or their desks. And so the teachers are getting that all gathered and are going to have that out for their kids. This is it. This is, this is the final week. Congrats to all of those seniors who didn't get to have all of the crazy fun parties that you usually have, but congratulations to you on finishing out um, what is going to be, Hey, probably the best High school graduation story of all your friends for the rest of your life. Yeah, that I was the class that didn't get to have it. Didn't get to have it. Our uh, We have uh, right across the street, well, uh, there is a senior that lives there, and he has celebrated mostly by riding a scooter uh, <laughs> around in the street around his house a lot because uh, I think he's so incredibly bored. So <laughs> it's been tough. It's been tough on these guys, and I'm sure missing out on all of those things. And it's like those are like the myriad ways that this pandemic has really – just change the way or upset the way we traditionally do things, celebrate graduations and weddings and funerals and all of those little bits and pieces of our lives that we have are still happening, right? I mean, like people are dying and people are being born and people are getting married and, and all of these things are happening and it's all weird in this time. And so it's, it's a little bit weird to try to figure out how to process it all. And it's especially hard when you're 18 and, you know, you haven't gotten all those skills in the first place. Speaking of things that are still happening, I want to take a quick second. And Jason, when we had uh, back in before quarantine, when we celebrated in January. In the before our, time. <laughs> our 300th episode back in January. At that point, we did a list of, of our most frequent guests. One of those, uh, the leader in that clubhouse, Julie Cook, I want a, a big town hall congratulations to Julie and her husband, Christopher. They had a new baby boy born last week. Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations to the Cook family. I'm glad everybody's happy and healthy. Uh, and we look forward to getting to uh, like coo at the cute baby as soon as it is uh, 
y'all are ready to come out of the outside and well the rest of us too <laughs> the other thing that's still going on jason elections election we are as, as of today's episode we are a week and a half away from the what was postponed municipal election so june 2nd a couple this quick notes like- Election season is like the reality show to get on our favorite soap opera. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Couple quick notes. Hey, go to the Jackson County Election Board website and check on polling locations. Very likely your polling location will be different this time around than it normally is as adjustments are made to meet all of the different uh, guidelines and procedures based on based on um, on COVID-19 and keeping everyone safe. So, so hit jceb.org and find out your polling location. And then we're going to take a short break here in a you, second. You should be, by the way, just to be clear, you should be getting something in the mail this week from the election board telling you where your new polling location is, but you can definitely go to the website to check that out um, and double check, you know, make sure, look, the, this is all weird for everybody. So make sure you're registered, make sure you've got the right spot where you're going to go do all those things. And if you, you know, are going to plan to vote absentee. Uh, you still have time to uh, go to the election board and vote absentee there. We're going to take a short break here in a second and we'll hear from one of our sponsors. And then we will be back this week with a couple more of our candidate interviews to help you be prepared to make your best choice. We will hear from District 3 candidate Rocco Florio and District 4 candidate Donnie Funk. Why, we why will not we hearing, be hearing yeah, from why their are we hearing from any of the others? In District 3, the incumbent Phyllis Edson and the District 4 incumbent Fred DeMauro declined to respond to any of our invitations for not only an interview, but to fill out our questionnaire, which we do every single election on Link to Lee Summit. And Jason, that brings me to a point. I want to voice some disappointment, some big disappointment in that there is a seems to be a trend from some of our local elected officials of not responding to the media. And that bothers me, not just because it's me and I want everybody to talk to me. I mean, let's be clear. That's part of it. Then, okay. Okay. <laughs> some, there's, some a, of it. there's a bigger picture here. But part of the gig when you want to be in elected office, when you want to be a public official, part of that gig is answering to the people. And that means that when local media has a question for you on what's going on, you answer, you respond. And even if that response is no, have the courtesy to do that. These two incumbents haven't even given that courtesy and that gives me pause. All right, so you're going to use the word courtesy. I'm going to pick a different word that starts with the letter C, and that's courage. Uh, We have been critical at times of many of the actions of the uh, city council uh, and votes that either of those have taken, although not a singular, we have never singled them out, I don't think, as a whole, except for, I think, one or two times when someone, uh, I believe council member Edson voted no, but didn't actually explain the reason why she voted against a thing um, that was on the docket and but beyond that we've been critical of them but i think that our record stands for itself over a number of election cycles that we are extremely fair and not uh we don't sit there and target and attack one person and not another we're not picking sides here and to have the council members essentially be so unwilling to face any criticism that they won't come on and participate in this process that every other candidate, uh, except for I think you would call a, our, one of our perpetual non-participatory candidates, uh, deals with is a lack of political courage to be able to stand behind your record um, and face any kind of questioning or criticism of it. So it is discourteous and uncourageous. Well, I, I, I can see where you're coming from I, on that. I, this is part of the job. When you, when you run for office, when you are in office, part of the job is answering questions and, and responding to the people. And so I, I expect that. And I think that when you are considering who you want to vote for, I think that's, that's a question is, will they, will they communicate with the public? Will they talk to us? Will they answer questions? And as I have said to some other people, whether or not I support as a, as a local media person is, is irrelevant. I'm going to ask the same questions 
whether I personally support or not, because that's my job isn't to offer support. Jason, we don't do endorsements. We no. that and that's on purpose. Our whole point of doing this is just to get information out there to get the voices out there so that people can make their best decision. They can know who these people are that are wanting their support. These people that want to lead our community. Who are they? What do they stand for? Right. What is they, their vision for the future? And, and I don't how think can we you hold can, them accountable. Right. And how can we hold them accountable? And that's, that's, that is the, the big, that's where I was going to go next. That's, that's, that's the biggest thing is once you get in office, will, will you be held accountable? So we're, I'm not saying that simply because they won't talk to us, you shouldn't vote for them. But I think it is a vote. I, I would say this. I think is it a strike against them in the overall consideration? How you prioritize that is something that you need to decide, but it is, their failure to appear is a uh, is a statement um, of of uh, candidacy as much as coming in and putting things in the questionnaire itself. You know who makes the decisions, Jason? The decider. The people who show up. That is absolutely so. Everybody show up and vote. Um, put those things in your check boxes, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll have a a responsive and accountable city council on the other side of June second. And with that, we will take a quick break and hear from one of our sponsors, and we'll be back with our two candidate interviews. Hi, I'm Jane Monroe, owner of Embrace the Grape and District 4 resident. Donnie Funk has my vote for city council, and here's why. Donnie's time serving on the planning commission, his experience in the construction industry, and his work as a small business owner has given him the insight we need on city council. This means that Donnie knows the questions to ask to get accountability for our tax dollars. Donnie Funk is a strong advocate for public safety and will work to ensure police and firefighters, along with all city employees, are well cared for. Join me in voting Funk for Four. Today we're continuing our candidate interviews for the upcoming municipal election. We have with us Rocco Florio, candidate for District 3. Rocco, welcome. Howdy. Extra pressure here because you're going to, you're the one. Last week, we or two weeks ago, we had District 1 where Nick lives. And this week, you are District 3, which is where I live. Oh, so hometown. we're going to be extra hard on you, Sweet. or I will be as we go through this process, <laughs> I promise. As a quick refresher, we, we this is not in order to do endorsements or anything. We do not do endorsements at Link to Lee Summit or the Town Hall podcast. There is only one question this entire fit thing where we will judge you. You'll know when we get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're ready. You ready, Jason? Uh, we are. Let's get into this. Rock, start, start with the hard one. Okay. Rocco, hard question. Deal. Why are you running? So I think it all started, um, we moved here five years ago, me, my wife, and my son. He's six. Uh, we live up in Lakewood. <clears throat> uh, we got the Muni Airport up there. Uh, I spent a lot of time outside and actually really enjoyed watching the old World War II biplanes do their formation stuff. And so it was really cool living so close to a, an airport like that. Uh, and then they expanded the runway about a thousand feet, I think. And I started worrying that um, we were going to turn into like O'Hare or Midway and have Southwest flying over our houses. So I started doing some research on who makes those decisions and um, the Aviation Commission and got into looking at the, uh, the Lee Summit website, City Council. And that's a wormhole as far as the... Uh, <laughs> oh, we live in that wormhole. Yeah, we I know. know. I've, I've seen you on there. So, it, yeah. Uh, the website's better now. I'll give them that much. It yeah. is better now. So, uh, it's, I found it really interesting um, just how uh, local government goes around here, people's involvement. Um, and so, that was my motive as far as just kind of getting involved here. The opportunity came when... Um, I finished my med ex medical executive role at uh, St. Lucie's Hospital, which was this January. So uh, I thought I'd really enjoy the free time. Uh, I had a bunch of projects I was going to do, and that lasted like two weeks. Uh, and I started getting a little antsy. And um, the icing on the cake is when uh, District 3 was unopposed. So I, I thought I'd run. Well, that's a that is a that is a good reason. Well, we it. always cheer for for races to be opposed. So, so anytime <laughs> yes. there are multiple we, people, we're we happy. like that. And and I think that 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 gateway in through finding that one issue that starts you down that path is is certainly a fair thing. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of subjects. Um, the first one we're going to start off is economic development. Mm -hmm. uh, in your answers on your questionnaire, and I'm going to do it again. You can find that 
at linktothesummit.com. There you go. I know. It gives me all the feels. All when the brand you plug name, my website. Well, you yelled at me the first well, time because I referred to it and then didn't say, referred to the questionnaire and didn't say where it was coming <laughs> from. All right. But in that questionnaire, you had mentioned about preventing uh, what you called over incentivizing projects um, sure. and taking into account what you, what you said. And I'm going to quote you here economic, social, and environmental impact on the community. So give me some more insight into what you mean by that. Like what factors are you really thinking about? Maybe you should apply it to the airport development and, yeah. and how you think about that way. Um, so what factors you're balancing and how you're coming to these, how you might come to these decisions that uh, impact whether or not to allow or encourage incentives, financial incentives for development. So I'm pretty new to this game. And uh, as far as what I've seen so far and what I've learned is incentives are a great way to support some of the local businesses that have been here already. They help uh, with areas that have blight and they don't have the funding to kind of take care of it. So you can beautify a part of a city that needs it to kind of keep up uh, real estate values and keep up just the the decorum that you want in a certain area. Uh, you could also use incentives to uh, lure new businesses in. Um, I think that applies to where, why the airport is here and some of the benefits and some of the corporate jets that I've seen fly over my house as far as um, that being a area that um, can be used to kind of uh, grow some of the jobs in the city and increase our, uh, our tax base. Um, what I was meaning was that uh, every decision we make needs to have the citizens at heart of it you know there needs to be value in the incentive but it also n needs to be um, based off of our, our values uh, and that the the incentives we use are going to um, help some of these businesses out but we have to have in mind that in the end it has to work best for uh, the citizens and has to bear fruit over the long term um, and not giving away the farm to some businesses uh, that or some uh, residencies, I like the Methodist uh, building going on down there, where um, th the advantage is going to that uh, private entity. Well, since you since you brought up the the, the old Methodist church that sounds going to be apartments, did that did the what they did there did that maybe strike you as something you would have uh, been opposed to had you been sitting on the on the dais? No, I I think. Um, being creative uh, in the use of incentives is a is a good way to actually form a partnership between businesses and the city, and the, and um, I think it's a way for us to uh, have some more influence instead of just telling some uh, business or some uh, residential area this is what we want. Um, instead of saying, "Hey, we'll come in on this with you, we'll help you out," but kind of come with us down this path and help with city planning as far as creating a, an environment that maybe is a little more uniform and has a little bit more thought in it instead of just letting everybody put up what they're putting up. So I think it's, I think it's useful. Um, I think you had another person on this podcast call it a hammer, which I, I, I really like that. I think it is a tool. It's something that we could use. Um, it just has to be used wisely. Have you ever wondered what factors go into creating your FICO score? If so, you're not alone. Score a Better Future is an exciting nationwide program created by FICO, the company which developed the FICO score used in over 90% of all credit granting decisions by lenders. In partnership with local nonprofit organizations, the next Score a Better Future financial community education event is coming to Kansas City. This free event will be held at the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center at 3700 Blue Parkway on March 19th from 6 to 8.30 p.m., Hear from FICO experts, gain access to your FICO score for free, and get one-on-one -on -one counseling from local nonprofit credit counselors. Dinner is also free, and Congressman Emanuel Cleaver from the 5th District will be speaking. Don't miss out. Spots will go fast, so go to www.fico.com backslash S-A-B-F to reserve your spot today. It's time to score a better future for you and your family. Oh, I thought you were ready for a follow up. No, good. He, we could move. I mean, you had that look. I'm sorry. <laughs> Usually, I had to wait for the hand motions. Well, we we talked a little bit already. Where where, where you mentioned the the airport issue, that expansion thing was what kind of got you into. Hey, I want to know what's going on with city government and how it works, and and that 
that made you dive in. So now as we look ahead to current issues, is there something, a current issue facing facing the community now that, that you really, if you're elected, you want to sink your teeth into? Is there something that maybe is really driving your decision to run for office? Being on the north side of town, uh, down Todd George with that PRI project coming up, um, that is some beautiful land over there. We take that way over to Little League um, in the summertime, and we're always calling out the deer and the turkey and stuff. And so I think uh, between that and the um, portion of South Lee Summit that's also up for development, uh, I think some of those decisions are going to be huge for um, everybody and for 20, 30 years. So I think we got to get it right now. I think it's uh, important that uh, those decisions kind of take in heart the economic benefit, but like I said earlier, em- environmental and just the overall quality of life for the citizens here in Lee Summit. Do you have a dream project? Is there something you'd love to see developed there? I'm just, I'm just going to make you throw something out just for the fun yeah, of it. Yeah, green space, you know, whatever it is, I'd love to see it with a, a lot of green and not, you know, a big concrete thing. Uh, I spent four years in Queens, New York, and, you know, kind of seeing that where the the amount of dirt and grass is limited, it's... It, it, it was one of the really nice things about living out here. So I would like whatever is in there to be uh, something that's pretty green. All right. Well, you, you, we like to talk. One of the things that we often uh, raise when we're we're dealing with city council issues and and city issues and honestly school board issues, but specifically for you, the city council is the the capacity to communicate what's going on. Lots of stuff is happening all the time in there and our podcast does what we can but as the city council person you talked about in your uh, questionnaire again about being a voice for the people as one of the the sort of core functions of that I think that works both ways um, that you have to be a voice for the people to to get there but you also have to to get that you have to listen so how do you plan to maybe change things up in terms of as a council council member communicating with your constituents uh, we're starting a website. It's called rocco for summit dot org, and look at uh, that. He can plug yeah. too. That's a nice plug. Uh, I think it's a, a it'll be a great way for uh, people to um, kind of communicate with me unilaterally. I'd also like to have a monthly town hall where I can kind of express what's been going on uh, in city council and what's been going around around town, um, and kind of people who listen to your podcast to kind of get that kind of. Um, boiled down version of what's going on uh, in the city. So I think uh, some face-to-face that way uh, is a good way to kind of hear people's concerns and then kind of express what our our plan is going forward. Jason talked a little bit about, about the communication being, a voice being both ways, that sometimes you also have to be a voice to the people. Is there... I guess is there is there a different way, or, or or do you look at things differently as far as far as getting to them and how you can explain? Because you talked about giving boiled down reason, bo- not reasons, but boiled down versions. How do you, how do you think you can explain all of the many many things that are happening at City Hall into not just digestible, but well, I guess digestible is really the way I want to say it. How, yeah. how can you do that? Uh, I think I might be a good medium for that because I'm fairly a novice at this and. Uh, I think it's it, it might be where I'm not so far along and too technical that um, I, I as I'm understanding it and learning it for myself, I, I kind of have that uh, information to pass on to everybody else and give them the version that you know after I've done all the research and uh, worked out what's going on and got it to where I can digest it. I think uh, it'd be at a level at that point for everyone else to get to. You, you've been really honest about, about that you're a novice at some of these things, and, and you're learning. Talk a little bit about that learning curve and what you've learned that you didn't already know, I guess, as, as you've kind of jumped into this thing. Uh, well, I, I have to say I started pretty much from square one where I didn't even know how the government structure was. I didn't know uh, how the council worked, how the mayor worked with the council, city staff, uh, Steve Arbo, learning pretty much all this stuff, planning commission. Um the website's been really good. I have a couple friends uh, who lived here a while who um, kind of explained to f- who some of the people were. Um, but in the end, it's really been a lot of reading and a lot of watching some of that 
that tape on the website. You, you know, and you just can't get enough watching council sessions. That's uh, <laughs> that puts you in a very rare it and is, perhaps not very admirable group. Is that is that what you use for anesthesia? When it, you're, when well, you're it is. I, I do rock it out at the bedtime. Wait, yeah, it's like when you're having trouble sleeping, we'll just click that on. Planning commission, I hear, is uh, particularly boring. So you should try that one as well. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna start to wrap up here a little bit, but we're gonna give you thirty seconds or so to just tell us why the people of District Three should vote for you for City Council. All right. Uh, present company excluded. Uh, I'm starting to see a, a real estate theme going on with the candidates uh, who are applying and some of the people who are on uh, council already. So I think it would be nice to add a little of a different perspective there, maybe a little diversity uh, as far as the lenses that we're using to look at some of these projects and some of these ideas. Um, I'm somebody who... Um, is not accepting campaign funds from anybody, no donations. This is all uh, out of us. So uh, there's no influence there from any, any outside sources. And I really don't have an agenda, just somebody who is ready to serve the city. So I think um, give an unbiased approach and be good for city council. All right. Well, we have to ask the, the, the last and the only question that we're going to ask you, to which there is what we believe is a right or wrong answer, we will judge you for. Are you, are you stealing it? No, I'm just going to... Oh, you're I'm, setting now, me up? I'm setting you up. Are you, are you, are you setting the my plate? Loop. I am setting you... I'm there we set, go. I'm handing you the plates. There we go. Well, here are the plates. If, if I were to put in front of you two plates, one plate holds tacos, one plate holds burgers. Rocco Florio, which are you choosing? So I know this is a Friday podcast, but we're recording it on Fat Tuesday. But every Tuesday is Taco Tuesday. There we go. Once again, the right answer. I, I, I feel like maybe he's listened a little bit and he, he knows how we judge. Hey, you know what? I'm That's okay fine. with that, though. I'm fine. <laughs> this is the kind of shameless sucking up to the judges that we can handle. Right. Well, that was the only thing. Rocco, thank you very much for taking a little bit of time to, to talk with us and, and let us help the voters a little bit by getting all the voices out there so that people can make the best decision they can. Rocco, thank you very much. And we will talk to everybody next time. Thank you very much. We are talking to District 4 City Council candidate Donnie Funk today. Donnie, welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Donnie, I'm just going to warn you in advance. Nick is so tired of seeing me on the other end of these calls and discussions that he will try and probably fail to keep his disgust down to a minimum. But it's going to get it might he might get a little short with me as we go along. I've been I've been pretty rough to deal with. Mostly, it's you know Fridays are the show I don't have to share. So uh, it's oh, been hard okay. for an election season for me to share the Friday shows, but it's not all about Nick anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we all know podcasting is an exercise in ego. So there we go. Donnie, let's, let's jump in. And this is my favorite time because I get to be, uh, I get to be cliche dad on the show. And I'm going to ask you the most cliched hard question that we've got. Donnie Funk, why are you running for office? Well, Nick, Jason, I mean, if you guys would have asked me this a month ago, I would have told you it was, you know, my, my time that I've served on the Planning Commission, Community Economic Development Committee, a little time on the Historic Preservation Committee. You know, I would have told you with that experience, I would have mentioned, you know, my, my experience in owning my own business for many years and having the opportunity to work for developers that I think, you know, the city's about to embark on a period of major growth and I feel like all of my experience in those fields and what I've had serving the city, uh, this would be a great time. My wife and I have spent uh, several years putting myself in the position to devote the time for uh, me to run and be able to you know, serve the, the, the folks of District 4 as well as the entire community. But, you know, now uh, my answer has changed a little bit because everything has changed. Almost overnight, we've, we've dealt with what is becoming the, the, the fact we're looking down the barrel of a possible economic downturn. You know, small businesses are, are, are running into some major setbacks right now. Teachers and kids are completely having to change uh, the way they teach, the way they learn. First responders and healthcare workers working around the clock, you know, citizens are worried and uncertain of, you know, their basic needs. Where are they going to come from next? And I think right now uh, we need forward facing, strong, you know, strong leadership. I mean, people that are vocal uh, here at the local level and, and we need a willing to communicate. Let, you know, let's hear from our local leaders. Where are they at? Let's, let's get to the point and let the citizens of our community know where the city stands right now. 
funny, actually, well, since you brought it up, and I know Nick and I had, had discussed this because you, you're the, the first one and probably the only one that we're going to end up interviewing of these of the candidates after the uh, stay-at-home orders were put into place and all of this stuff has sort of come down um, in the last couple of weeks. So what are you, um, as a communication is something that you talked about working with individual constituents, and, um, but in situations like this, how do you as a city council member uh, be an effective communicator with the public, a strong leader to use your phrase, um, but make sure that you sort of still sort of present the, the, the view of the city as a whole? You know, I think it's getting, we have the, the, the great, you know, connection of, of social media and, and keeping the post of the cities flowing, making sure the citizens, um, it, you know, up on, on council members' pages, having the, the information that's posted from the Jackson County Health Department, and just keeping that social media stuff turning. I'm sure there's a lot of people at home right now that, that are tuned in to television, that are tuned in to their phones, their iPads, their computers, and just keep that information flowing and, and, and develop a, a line of communication, making sure the constituents have your phone number, make sure the constituents have your email addresses so they can reach out and maybe get some questions answered that they may not be getting just from a standard news report. Well, let's uh, let, let's kind of follow into that and let's talk about, about moving forward. Uh, you know, um, we asked you in your questionnaire a little bit about, about opportunities that you, you see going forward. And you know, one of the things that you talked about was, was there's, there's an opportunity to grow the, ta the existing tax, tax base. The, 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 the odd thing is you also put in your, in, under your what are some issues we face, you also put in your answer there that we've got to find some new ways to expand that because there are some projected shortfalls. And now, as, as Jason mentioned, now we're looking at maybe even more of a need just based on, on the economic reactions to, to, to COVID-19. So talk to me a little bit about maybe some areas where you think you can, can have influence or be a champion of growth, economic growth for the city if you're elected into the city council. You know, I think it, it, it really is a matter of, of utilizing some of our, um, our, our PSAs, um, you know, the chamber, uh, economic development council you know having those folks really you know it's time to step up the game it's time to really get out there and push because i i think we're going to see a little bit stronger of a setback um just in you know we've got a lot of small businesses with their doors closed right now and we're going to have to put together a, a strong tax base we're going to have to get out we're going to have to push and see what these developers want see what they need you know, we might have to really, you know, take a step and, and look at our incentives packages and, and sweeten the pot a little bit to, to get this moving forward. Well, if you're, if you're going to, and incentives is a, is a good place as any to sort of pivot a little bit here, if we're going to have to sweeten the pot. But I knew you were going to go there. Let's do this thing. Um, if we're going to sweeten the pot, that also does have the impact of of reducing the ceiling of tax revenue in the future, right? If we, I mean, this is just the math. If we're not charging tax on property value in some fashion or another, we're dealing with that. You had, you had said in your questionnaire, um, I guess to bring it, we'll, we'll give it a concrete example. You're kind of advocating for maybe a more broad use of LCRA, Land Clearance or Redevelopment Act. Um, yes. The, in, in that process. There are members of the council who you would be serving with who think that the definition of blight that is required uh, to activate the LCRA is, is incredibly overbroad uh, and, and is kind of used or even abused to benefit developers. So where do you think you can use it more effectively uh, now or in the near future as we go forward? Well, I think we could use it in an example is, is to maybe if, if we're expanding in a specific part of the community um, to be able to utilize it maybe for a public service facility, a fire station, a police, you know, maybe we need to get a police uh, transfer station out there or something of that nature. Um, I, I guess that there is a broad way of, of things to use it for. I mean, hopefully uh, the main tool is to get the developer on board and start negotiating 
and, and it has to be in a, the benefit of the city. I mean, it can't be a one-way street. It obviously has to meet in the middle and it has to kind of, in the short term, it may not benefit the city, but I think in years to come, it will. Well, Donnie, I, I want I want to ask you ask you this question. I, I, we had this written down earlier as a topic a topic of conversation, and I think like everything else, it changed the the context of the question changes a little bit based on the fact that we're we're all sitting trapped in our homes during this interview. Um, you're if elected, you would take office now two months later than than normal. What do you think some of those those first big issues are are, are going to be that you're going to have to you're going to have to tackle? We, obviously, there's budget, but what what else are some big issues that you think you're going to have to hit? You know, I, Nick, to go back to what your your question there. I think some of the things we're going to have to look at is the emergency fund. Um, now we've we've hit an emergency. Um, what is the city going to need to do with that money? Uh, is it is it to help uh, pay employees? Uh, significant overtime that may go into this mess over the next few weeks. Uh, that may be something that may need to be addressed. We need to address some of the land that may come available for the PIR ground and, and uh, take a look at, is the city going to fund the infrastructure to attract some development? I think there's a lot of things that are going to hit right when we, when this new council comes together. Donnie, you, you, you were, you know, you, where are your priorities for the budget as we're dealing with that going forward? I mean, so whatever the fallout will be, and no, and to be clear, nobody knows. Uh, what what are the priorities that you kind of want to stand on when you're putting those those ideas together? When you when the nine of you are together making those decisions, I think the the number one idea is. is Priority, excuse me, not idea. And the number one priority is going to be how do we all put our heads together? How do we come together and, and start expanding this tax base? Uh, it, you know, is it new development? Is it redevelopment? You know, do we look at, need to some incentives to, to redevelop some of the areas around here and, and maybe attract some, some stuff into these places or help current businesses boost their product, boost their brand. Um, I think that's one. I think the other is, is we're going to have to look at, you know, maintaining our, our public safety and keeping it in line with the growth that could come with the city. I'm going to, I'm going to follow up with uh, Jason's favorite topic. It's like, I'm going to suck up to him today here, but oh boy, you're, you're talking, you're talking about it, about incentives. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that, that incentive policy that the, that, that the city has. And kind of maybe, are there things that you think need to be adjusted? Or do you think it's do you think it's set up right now to to where where it can be really put to use to do the kind of expansion that you're talking about? Uh, Nick, I, I I've looked at it. Um, I, I think it's a solid policy. I think every policy could have some tweaks and turns. And I mean looking at when some of the, the, the tools are used, length of time, I think some of those things, I mean, are obviously can be adjusted on the fly, but I mean, all in all, I think it's a, it's a solid policy, but I think using the LCRA uh, with some of the flexibility we have with it is a better plan. I mean, I know it's part of the incentive policy, but I think it's one that I would move to the forefront. Well, I, I'll, I'll kind of, Take that and, and pivot a little bit. You um, you you kind of in this in this interview you're talking about sort of hitting the ground aggressively when it comes to development and things as the driver to sort of pull us through whatever economic setback that we're having. Uh, what are your um, on the you know and here we'll just make sure that we're clear. Both Donnie and I have served together for a number of years on the planning commission. Um, I hold that against both of you. Yeah, well, I just, you know, I can't, I have no argument. Uh, <laughs> if you're elected, you, you've you sat on the planning commission a number of times where the the commission has done things sort of over the the expressed a displeasure of people who've come into the whole thing. And and so this, this additional development or new development is going to meet with a fair bit of you know, at least neighborhood resistance on a case by case basis. So how do you figure to communicate that um, with the with the people that you I mean, understand their concerns, but you're going to 
kind of go against what they want you to do in the first place? Well, I think it, you, you have to educate them. You have to educate them on, by all means, I think most of our community is well-informed. Some people just, they, they're, they're, they have busy lives. They are running kids from here to there and they don't get all of the information. And I think it's a matter and, and the responsibility of a councilman a council person to get out and and meet with their constituents, not only in their own district, but all of the districts to help educate them that this is not a bad thing, whether it be a, a possible multifamily development, whether it be a new building. I'm going I'm to ask you one last follow up on that. What are some ideas that you have uh, to, to be able to make that kind of communication happen. This is happen. This is a topic that we, we talk about with candidates every time the election season rolls around and, and we, we kind of try to follow through with it in those conversations after elections as well with sitting, with sitting um, officials. But what are some ideas that you have that you can continue to be, you know, both a voice for and a voice to the people that you're serving? Um, you know, again, I'll go back to a, a cool platform that I like, and that's social media. Um, being open on there, letting people know what's coming up, what's going on, uh, having an open line of communication with all my constituents in, here in District 4 or anybody in the community. And I think having a cohesive group up there uh, on the diocese is something that's important that everybody can communicate with everybody's constituents. I would like to, I, I've kind of toyed with the idea of having some sort of, you know, quarterly meeting, if you will, with my constituents, just an open door policy to say, hey, you know, going to sit down, uh, maybe a podcast of my own, maybe bug some guys at Link to Lee Summit to help me through that. But just to say, hey, this is what's going on in our district. This is a possibility that's coming our way. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to explain. Well, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to try to keep this around the same time that we do all of the other candidate conversations. I'm going to finish this with the one question where we will judge your answer. We don't do endorsements, but we will judge you on your response to this question. Donnie Funk, you are sitting comfortably in your home. If I were to put in front of you two dinner plates, one holds burgers and one holds tacos, which one are you choosing? Are you going to be brave or are you going to be wrong? Or brave and wrong or right and, right and smart? What are you going to do? The, the best pairing with a margarita is tacos. So I have to go tacos. Oh, well, this is, this is a, a new way to come to the, this particular answer. But once again, you have arrived at the correct place. It is, it is correct. <laughs> I haven't done an official count, but I believe, Jason, uh -huh. that our team is winning. Uh, our, look. We are on the right side of all the things, history, facts, logic, <laughs> and, tacos. Buds, and tacos. So Donnie Funk, thank you for your very correct answer at the very end of this, uh, at the very end of this interview. Thank you guys. Donnie, thanks for taking the time to not only talk with us today, but also taking the time to put your name in the hat and offer to serve our community. We appreciate it. And as we say to everyone, good luck in the election. Thank you, guys. I appreciate the time. You have been listening to Lee Summit Town Hall, a link to Lee Summit podcast with hosts Nick Parker and Jason Norberry. A proud member of the Fredcast Network, you can subscribe to this podcast on most of your favorite podcast apps and catch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for all the news, analysis, and conversations on the Lee Summit community. Connect with us on Facebook at link to Lee Summit or on Twitter at LS Town Hall. Mm -hmm.